Basketball, Basketball River Hawks, uh, second round of the playoffs. Get rolling. Uh, Wednesday night in Ringe, New Hampshire, Franklin Pierce, the opponent. We are joined by the head coach of the River Hawks, that is Greg Horenda, and coach. Uh, right off the bat, we've played Franklin Pierce twice, we've come up short twice. Don't we uh, want to talk total, about Southern Connecticut at all? I don't want to talk about the past, I want to talk about the future. Okay. We want to talk about the future, it will have some reference to the past. But we've uh, we've beaten, we've played Franklin Pierce twice, we've lost twice, but only by a total of nine points, so in other words, average of four and a half points. What does it take to get over that hump, to, to not just be close, but to be a winner? I think at the end of the day, uh, I know it's repetitive, but we got to do a better job of stopping them. We've lost twice, and in one game, Guillaume scored 27 points, and in the second game, Cooper scored 25 points. And we held everybody else in check for a greater or lesser degree. So it's about defense. But right now, you know, our, our offense is clicking. On our last two games we've scored, I believe we've averaged 86 points in our last two basketball games. So we're scoring the basketball. But, you know, we have to go back and, and, and get back to the scene of the crime <laughs> and, and, and win a basketball game. And they've beaten us twice and told our guys right after the game yesterday, if we don't win, we lose to a team three times, and you don't deserve to be a champion of anything losing to somebody three times. So I've got a lot of respect for Franklin Pierce. They were picked 15th in the league, and they're the number one seed in the East region. I think it's a great example for all of our players and the entire league and for all you youngsters out there. Uh, don't believe anything. And, and, and obviously Franklin Pierce didn't believe it, and um, they're number one and we're number Four, but all those numbers are out the window. It's one game, and, and uh, you either move on or you uh, you lose and, and you wait. And uh, I feel very good about my team. I really do. I think it's hard to beat a team three times, and I know that sounds cliche-ish, but it is. And we're a good team, so to beat us three times is going to take a great effort from them. But for us to win, we've got to guard, score the basketball, rebound, and do everything we've been doing uh, the last – for the greater or lesser uh, last 10 days in practice and in games. And I, I really like where our team is at. It's a defense. We've got to guard. It seemed against Southern Connecticut that for the most part you guys did that. You got the job done defensively. Oh, yeah. I mean, we held the leading score in the league to, to four points. And uh, the Hamlet kid didn't have a field goal. And obviously Smith had a big night. He had 21 in the first half. But collectively we're guarding. And I think we attempt – to guard every night. And I think you can always rely on the effort. And we our effort has always been great. And now our execution. I think there's a defensive chemistry. You always talk about offensive chemistry. Right now, there's a defensive chemistry in regards to switching and rotating and, and just playing together. And I think we're playing together on that defensive end. And, and obviously playing together on the offensive end and not relying on one individual in the um, game against Southern Connecticut, you got yeah. four guys in double digits and four guys separated by about four points. Yeah. So, I mean, everybody an equal contributor sure. and got contributions from those who may not have reached double digits. It looked like probably the best distribution of the basketball that I've seen from this team in a while. Oh, yeah. now, we, had, we had 15 assists, and we're, we're just when, when we're running, and now we're running, and, and in order to run, you have to stop. But when we run, the, the, the opportunities and the ability for our guys to score a lot of points are, are, are phenomenal. You know, you have Antonio and Kerry who run hard to the basket. DePanjo and Matt run right to the line, and Akeem goes wherever he wants to go uh, when we're running. So uh, and then you put, you know, Robbie Walton on the floor, and he's played great our last two games. And uh, we've got balance, and I, I think that's why Pierce is good. They've got balance. They have seven or eight guys that can score the basketball, and so do we. And I, I think it'll come down to who stops. But, you know, they scored 55 points in their last game. We scored 86 points. So it's going to be a contrast of styles to a certain d degree. But I, I, I'm i happy where we're at. We're, we're in postseason play, and... Uh, this is exciting times, and, and I think our, our guys will be up for the task on Wednesday. I think all year we've talked about, and people have talked about, how well this team can shoot from the outside. And at times, if there was a criticism, we struggled to score inside. At least uh, against Southern Connecticut, our inside game looks stronger than it's looked in a while. No, uh, our interior, uh, you know, we're doing it by committee, but one night it's, you know, 
John Carbaccio, Daryl Ward, Kerry Weldon has been our most consistent interior player for the last month. Um, we've got guys, and even like Paris and He Man, we, we've got a bunch of inside guys, and I think that stabilizes our offense because if we just go up to Franco Pierce and just shoot a ton of threes and expect to make them all, um, I don't like our odds, but if we shoot the three and then go inside and then drive it and uh, I was taught by my wife a long time ago that balance in life is great. So there's basketball, and then there are other things in life other than basketball. So, And even within the game of basketball, there's balance. And I, I think she's right. I think the more balanced that we play and the more balanced uh, our staff is and what our intentions are, uh, the better opportunity we have to, uh, to win the basketball game. I guess finally, you're playing in Franklin Pierce's building, playing in Ridge, New Hampshire. Yes. Does that, does that make a difference? Is there a distinct home court advantage for Franklin Pierce? I think the further you go in the tournament, the less home court takes advantage. And now you have two good teams. You know, and it, it's, it's a tough place to play. But, you know, I've coached in Madison Square Garden and the Carrier Dome and at Notre Dame. And, you know, it's, 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 it's all relative. And I, I think it's going to be taken care of by the people on the floor, not the people in the stands. And, and again, if you have your home crowd behind you, I understand that. But I, but I think I think the people on the floor will dictate who's going to win a basketball game. And, and you know, I really like the guys in the blue jerseys. All right, Coach. Thank you very much for your time. Again, the Riverhawks take on Franklin Pierce Wednesday night, second round of the Northeast 10 tournament. Thank, thank you, Bob. Appreciate it.